Hey there, Sam. Let's learn how we can subscribe to a WebSocket channel on the front-end JavaScript. Thankfully, Laravel has provided us a client library called Laravel Echo that takes care of all the hard work for us, so we can easily subscribe to our channel and listen to events. So first thing first, let's go to our terminal and run npm install Laravel Echo. We will also need to install the client library of Pusher.js because we are using the Laravel WebSocket server as a proxy to the actual Pusher server. And now once we have installed the npm packages, we'll need to configure Webpack in order for us to use these packages in our front-end JavaScript. And thankfully Laravel provided us a tool called Laravel Mix, which is a wrapper around Webpack to let us configure Webpack with an easy-to-use API. To configure Laravel Mix, we need to go to the file webpack.mix.js, which is living in the root of our project directory. Now if you're not building the front-end, this part might not be that relevant to you. We are really just compiling all of our front-end code for our app. Now I want to enable the hot module reload feature in Webpack. So what I need to do in this file is to call the option function from Laravel Mix and pass in the option where I'll define the host and the port for the hot reload development server. The hot reload development server will serve as a proxy server to store all the compiled assets. And once we're done, we will create a new blade file for our WebSocket experimentations. And I'll go ahead and load our JavaScript where the source URL is in our hot reload server. Laravel Mix allows us to resolve the compiled assets in the hot reload server by using the mix helper functions. And once we're done, we can ensure that the code in our app.js will become available to this blade file. All right, let's take a look inside our app.js. It is quite empty, and the only line is loading the bootstrap.js file. And bootstrap.js is really loading all the global libraries into the Windows object. And at the very bottom of this file, we can see that in the commented code here, Laravel has provided us some snippets for us to load Laravel Echo. Let's uncomment it. And what it is really doing here is to load Echo and Pusher into the Windows object so that we can call these libraries globally in our app. Let's take a brief look at the configuration of Echo. The broadcaster option is for us to define the broadcast driver which in our case will still be Pusher since we're using Laravel WebSockets. Key is the API key of Pusher and we're simply reading it from the .env file. Laravel Mix will automatically load all the env variables with the mix prefix. Cluster is the cluster information about the WebSocket server. We don't really need it in our case because we're not using Pusher. False TLS is only required when we're using SSL. We will set it to false for now. And on top of this existing configuration, we also need to pass in a few more for echo to work correctly. The first one is the WS host key, which is a host name of our WebSocket server. And in our case, it has the same domain name as our front end client. We can just use window.location.hostname. And we also need to set the port of the WebSocket server and also set encrypted to false. And again, because we're not using SSL. And finally, to set the enabled transport property, so that will restrict the transport of data to the WebSocket protocol only. WSS is a secure version of the WebSocket protocol that utilizes the SSL certificate, just like HTTPS in HTTP. Okay, now we have finished setting up Echo. We are ready to connect to our WebSocket server. Let's go to app.js. And currently, we have only one public channel defined on our server from the previous lesson. To subscribe to a public channel, we simply need to call the channel function on the echo object that we have set on the Windows global object. This function will return us a channel object that contains a multitude of helper functions for us to work with our WebSocket channels. We can call the subscribe function to register a callback that will be triggered when we have successfully connected to a channel. I'll simply console out subscribe just for demonstration. And now let's try to run our app. We'll go to our terminal, start our server, and start the WebSocket server. And we also need to start the hot reload development server. And thankfully, Laravel has provided us a script called hot in our package.json. And now the last thing that we need to test our code is to set up an endpoint to serve our WebSocket dummy blade file. I'll simply go to the web.php file and register a new endpoint called ws, which will simply send back the WebSocket view. Okay, now everything is ready. Let's go to our browser and visit our app. And in the browser console, we can see that the callback has been triggered and we are subscribed to the public channel. 
And just to double check, if we go to our terminal, we can see that in the console, it says that subscription succeeded and there's a new connection subscribed to the public channel. Great. And now let's look at how we can receive events in a front end client. To do that, we need to call the listen function on the channel object. The first argument is the event name. So in the playground event that we created in a previous lesson, we have made it so that it will be broadcasted under a custom name called playground. Since we have used a custom name, so in the listen function, we need to put a dot prefix before the event name. Otherwise, Laravel Echo will be using the default prefix, which is the fully qualified event namespace in Laravel's app. The second argument that the listen function will receive is a callback function to handle the event. And the argument is the event payload. Just for demonstration, in the function body, I'll console log out the event for now. Let's go back to our browser. I'll hit refresh and go to Postman and send a request to the playground endpoint that we created in a previous lesson to fire the playground event. And in the browser console, we see the event payload printed out in the console which is exactly the data I have attached inside the playground event that I have defined inside the broadcast with function. Isn't that neat? Can you think of any application that you can build with this feature? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, just as a quick example, we can easily build a simple messaging application using WebSockets. Let's give this a go. First of all, I'll add an input box in our HTML for the user to type in their messages. Next, I'll add an event listener so that whenever the user has entered a message, we'll send an API request to the server and the server will broadcast an event to the other subscribing clients and the broadcaster event will contain the text message that the user has just entered. So within the event listener, we'll grab the user input and go ahead and send a post request to an API endpoint, which we'll be defining it very soon in our API server. Okay, now let's go to our web.php file and we'll quickly define a new endpoint called chart message. This post endpoint should fire an event that will be broadcasted to the WebSocket. I think it's a good idea to refactor our playground event to something more meaningful. I'll refactor the playground event class into chart message event. And this class will accept a string message in the constructor. And I'll rename the channel name to public chart one instead of public playground one. And I also renamed the event broadcast name to chart message. And the event payload will only contain one property, which is the message to be broadcasted. And now back inside our app.js, we'll change the subscription channel to public chart one, and also refactor the event name. All right, let's test our code. We'll go to our browser, type in a message, and oops, the page refreshes because I forgot to call prevent default on the submit event. Let's try again. The page stopped refreshing, but we got nothing in the console. And the reason is because we haven't defined anything in the body of our chart message post endpoint. So let's go back to web.php. We will fire the chart message event in the endpoint and pass the message inside a request into the constructor of the event class. All right, let's go back to our browser and try for one more time. I'll hit enter in the input box, and this time we see our message appearing in a console. Great. And now if I open a separate browser window and type in 1 to 3 in the text box, and we see the message 1 to 3 appearing in the first browser window because both of the browser windows are now subscribing to the same channel and the message event is broadcasted to all of the subscribers. That's the reason on why the first browser window is receiving the message 1 to 3 that I type in in the second browser window. All right, let's keep going. Now I want to keep a history of all the messages that we have typed in the DOM. Let's see how we can achieve this. I'll go back to the HTML and create a list and I'll put in all the messages inside this list. And now I'll go back to app.js and every time we got a new message from the WebSocket, We'll create a new list item and add it to the message list. Okay, let's test our code. I'll type in one, two, three in a browser window and a message shows up in the other. Let's try it on the second browser window. I'll type in two, two, two. 
and it shows up in the first browser window as well. Isn't that great? We got the basic aspect of a chat app working. Now the next thing that we need to do is to make use of the private or presence channel so that we'll only allow authorized user to send messages. We'll continue in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Key takeaways for this lesson. Laravel Echo is the official JavaScript client for us to subscribe and receive WebSocket events from the server. Laravel Mix is a powerful wrapper around Webpack that provides a painless API to configure Webpack. We use the channel function from Echo to subscribe to a WebSocket channel. And the subscribe method let us to define a callback that will be triggered when we have successfully subscribed to a channel. The listen function allows us to listen to WebSocket events and we should use a dot prefix when we want to listen to a custom event in Echo. Otherwise, Echo will be prefixing the fully qualified class name of the WebSocket event. That's it for now and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.